Warning! This video contains massive spoilers for Super Mario Odyssey, specifically for the final kingdom of the game, as well as the final boss and ending. Leave now if you don't want to ruin the ending of the game for yourself. You've been warned. Now, on with the video! Hey everyone, Kaihatsu here, and oh boy, I did not expect to be making a video about this. I actually have another Science Behind video in the works about another aspect of Super Mario Odyssey, but I decided to make this first after finishing the main story of the game. The moon. Oh, the moon. It's mysterious, isn't it? It's the furthest that any human has traveled outside of our own planet, and it has been a key figure in culture for thousands of years, from playing the role of a god, to being represented by many different symbols in occultism. And there's still so much that we don't know about it. The final section of the main story of Mario Odyssey takes place on the moon, and while traversing through the underground portion of the moon before we reach the final boss, I was wondering to myself why the rocks were all... cubes. And of course, at first I drew parallels to Minecraft, but apart from the appearance of the nether, there doesn't seem to be any other connection to the segment of Mario Odyssey. Then there's the rocks with these weird metal cubes inside, but I still had not come to any conclusion about the significance of them, even while playing the final boss of the game. It was only after the credits started rolling that I started to piece it together. Metal cubes lodged in cubic rocks, molten rock inside the moon, an electric beacon inside the final rock, and then... it clicked! Mario Odyssey's moon may be one of, if not the most, accurate portrayals of our moon in gaming. Uh, geologically speaking, that is. Because somehow Nintendo forgot that there is no atmosphere on the moon, the moon isn't actually as big as it is in the game, and it also isn't as close to the Earth as it is in the game because that would profoundly affect gravitational forces and tides. And of course, just as another side note, I feel really sorry for Bowser during the final cutscene, because lunar soil is quite coarse underneath the fine powdery surface layer, and falling on it like that would leave you with some very painful scratches and gashes. Not to mention that the dust is electrically charged and sticks to anything it touches. And as well as this, NASA has determined that lunar dust may be toxic and cause respiratory problems. Anyways, back to the moon's underground area. So, as it turns out, our current understanding of the moon is that it actually has a molten core similar to that of our own planet, but much smaller. It is theorized that the moon may have a solid iron core surrounded by a softer, somewhat molten liquid iron outer core. The outer core may extend as far out as 500 kilometers, but the small inner core only makes up about 20% of the moon. The fact that the core is iron is very important, because this reveals to us a lot about these odd lunar rocks that we see in the game. Because of the cubic shape of these metal rocks, it's pretty easy to determine what type of mineral they're made of. Pyrite! Pyrite, also known as iron pyrite or fool's gold, is an iron sulfide with the chemical formula FES2. And as we know, there is a high abundance of iron on the moon, which makes the formation of this type of mineral on the moon in Odyssey probable, making this mineral the most likely candidate for this mysterious moon rock. As for the mysterious energy-filled moon rocks that we find on the surface of the Earth, they're also probably made out of pyrite, but they've probably been manufactured by someone or something, as the in-game description from the Moon Kingdom's brochure hints at how it's hard to imagine how these cubic moon rocks formed naturally, but that's something to explore in another video. Naturally forming pyrite, however, manages to form these perfect cubic structures, albeit without cracks in them like these strange cubes. The normal metal cubes seen on the moon in the game, however, match this description. Pyrite crystals form in the isometric system, and as such, pyrite can form into cubes, octahedrons, pyritohedrons, and combinations of these. Pyrite is also found embedded in other rocks and minerals, such as calcite. Calcite, which as you should be able to guess from the name, contains calcium, another key element found on the moon. Smaller cubes of pyrite are also seen embedded into rocks throughout this portion of the game, and small cubes are even left behind by the strange rocks on the Earth. Pyrite even becomes electromagnetic after being heated, so the rock in the final part of the game with an electrical beacon in it makes a bit more sense. Although, that part of the game is still very confusing. So, because of this, I think it's safe to say that Mario Odyssey has done a scarily good job of replicating the geology of the moon. Perhaps one of the best portrayals of the moon in the history of gaming! At the very least, the developers definitely did their research on what minerals form in iron-rich environments. But of course, there are still many more mysteries that remain unsolved. What about the moon rocks on the Earth's surface? Is there a greater evil force on the dark side of the moon, aside from the bunny rabbits? 
The brochures and Odyssey answer a lot of questions, but also create a lot more, so I'll definitely be taking a look at some of the things that the brochures say in future videos. Anyways, what do you think? Is Mario Odyssey's moon geologically accurate? Leave your opinion below, and let me know if there are any more Mario Odyssey mysteries that you would like me to cover. I also have a Discord server you can join, where we can talk about games and all sorts of other stuff. Link is down below. See you next time!